We're just a week away from WWE Money in the Bank taking place in London, England, where the crowd is no doubt going to be electric. And tonight, Vince, I mean WWE brass, clearly not Vince. Vince would never be behind the scenes. I need to make changes. I'm going to take Shotzi and Bailey off. I'm going to put two dirty blondes against each other. It's such good shit. Ha ha ha. They thought this show was a good way to hype people up for next week's premium live event. And guess what? It wasn't. I'm John Renton with my review WWE Smackdown from the Cajun Dome. Welcome to Cajun Dome. This is Cajun Dome. Rest in peace, Tina Turner. Lafayette, Louisiana. Former stomping ground of Mid-South Wrestling. And boy, those crowds there saw a lot better than this. The effort was there, but there were a lot of botches and a lot of stuff where this was just a maintenance show. <coughs> Bloodline recaps. And you're out, and I'm out too. Super kick, and there you go. Usos come out, get love from the crowd. They say, we don't want to fight our family. We're not the Benoits or the Von Erichs or what Grizzly Smith did to his own family. That's a mean comparison, but nevertheless, we are, we're tired of the disrespect, and they knocked Haman. Oh my God, they're making the Jewish man the villain. It's like Walt Disney ghost wrote this from hell. It was fine for what it was. Decent enough promo. And then we go to Ray making his entrance. We go to break. L.A. Knight gets a big pop. They have a match that was fine. Ray doesn't knees any knees to get through this. Seriously, it's actually astonishing he can still move this well. <laughs> L.A. Knight, with some good offense, eventually gets the win. That was a bit shocking. I really hope they give L.A. Knight the briefcase and not Logan Paul. But nevertheless, they gave L.A. Knight a big win. And then... Escobar stops an unmasking, even though if you're like me, and I know I'm like me, if I wasn't like me, if I wasn't me, I don't know who the fuck I would actually be. Escobar stops Ray from being unmasked, even though we all know what Ray looks like. If you watch the last couple years of WCW, so Solo spikes Ridge, putting it and jamming it down his throat, so the other man was choking on Solo's spike. You're welcome for that. And then... Heyman's all spooked. Sheamus calls him out, says, that's it. I want him, Pierce. I'll get Heyman. That's not good enough. Sheamus immediately goes to the ring, says, Solo, face me tonight, and then walks backstage. And then Raquel's at ringside for Isla Dawn and Alba Fire against Rousey and Shayna for the unification of the NXT and the Women's Tag Team Championships. The NXT Women's Tag Team Championships, by the way. Isla and Alba did not beat Gallus for the Tag Team Championships. As hilarious as that would have been, it also would have been weird. Okay, I'm going to say right now, Rousey, taking away, they were taking out the fact that she hates trans people and is a Sandy Hook truther, and it's proven that she has really shit opinions on things. Taking all that away and just focusing on her in the ring, I'm sorry, she's just not cutting it anymore. She's not motivated. Shayna has had better partners. Shayna has done better, you know, in the ring than she, you know, has been doing having to carry Ronda Rousey. And I'm sure it's a thrill for both of them. If the women's tag division across any brand or across all three brands was salvageable, this might work. But Rousey has not been motivated, has not been beneficial to the company, and this isn't working. The match wasn't that good either, and the crowd didn't really care. Isla, I'm not going to say, is the greatest in the ring. Alba is clearly the superior worker. They work fine together. A double submission spot got the victory. And then Rousey said, The people of Louisiana, you can't speak one language, let alone two. This is the same woman that struggles with basic grammar and also said once about Sasha, What does she expect me to do? Cut off my hair and wash her feet with it. Rousey, the noted, you know, rogue scholar that she is, she says, Oh, Raquel, what are you going to do? Raquel says, We won a tag tile shot. What do you mean, we? You don't have anybody here. And then Liv comes back. Liv is back. Not out all summer? Good. As long as she's healthy, that's good. As she's going to herniate every disc in her body carrying Raquel, that sack of goopy shit. But Liv's back. Hooray! Stop thinking about it, Kira. I know you're thinking about it. You stop it. Get some help. Grayson Waller effect? Again? Okay, they just seem to be doing this with him. He just seems to be doing this stuff. Maybe it's a way to get him hyped up or to hype him up. We want to see this guy get beat up. And it kind of makes sense. I don't know about the shirt choice, but it was what it was. But who are his guests? Pretty Deadly. Okay, all I have to fucking say is anytime Pretty Deadly is on screen, I wish for the cancellation of this program. Honestly, they are embarrassing to watch. They are catastrophically 
They're, they're awful. They're fucking awful. I don't care if they're good in the ring. The gimmick's stupid. They look stupid. And I don't want to hear them. This went on forever. I left the room to go actually take care of some <laughs> chores around the house. Because I don't want to see these stupid fucks. This went forever. I was embarrassed to be a wrestling fan watching this. And I don't mind Grayson Waller now. This was given too much TV time. The Prophets are here. It is like this goddamn segment and the following match were made to annoy me and me specifically. Pretty Deadly beat the Prophets. This was like 30 minutes of television time. And Pretty Deadly gets a tag title shot next week. Why do I fear they're going to win? They win. Just abolish the tag team division. Just send all the tag team champions. Send the tag teams home or just say we're going to split you all up and we're going to have you go your separate ways and Pretty Deadly can just be the tag team champions forever because they shouldn't be allowed to defend the titles because Pretty Deadly are not good because I don't want to see them. They cut Bailey and Shotzi. So we got Charlotte and Lacey Evans, two dirty blondes trying to do stuff and one was more motivated and Charlotte was more motivated and that is really sad. She, um, she beat Lacey. Why is Lacey still there is what I noted. And then Asuka <coughs> attacks her in very bright clothes. Charlotte, that is, to hype up the match next week. So SmackDown next week is in London, in the UK, obviously. And I guess they're going to tape it a little bit earlier in the day, so spoilers are going to be all over the goddamn, uh, all over social media. So maybe if, we're, if we don't want to be spoiled, we stay off of social media <coughs> for the few hours that day. I got a bunch of shit I got to do, so I'm probably not going to see shit. Um, and there you go. So, so far, Solo, uh, we, we're up to Solo making his entrance at 6.32. And then we cut back to Pierce uh, telling Bianca, you're banned from ringside, but I promise you're going to get a title shot. And, of course, of course, Bianca's going to interfere. And we're going to have a three-way, probably at Money in the Bank. Maybe they had that last minute. Or they build it to SummerSlam. I would vote building to SummerSlam. Logan Paul is going to be on next week's show as part of the Grayson Waller effect. I'm not so sure that next week's SmackDown is going to be that great. <laughs> because they're probably going to mess with the audio because it's going to be pre-taped. Sheamus and Solo had a hard-hitting match where Solo had been in the ring already for about 10 goddamn minutes. Samoan drop on the floor to a man that has had spinal stenosis, uh, diagnosis that is. Probably not the best and Sheamus isn't a young man even though he's in great shape. Sheamus kept selling his back. Um... They did a renegade, or renegade, a, a renegade bump where uh, it, it didn't end well in March of 99. That's mean. That's mean. Why did I do that? A barricade bump where Solo totally missed, by the way, and Sheamus was KO'd. And then security tried to come out, and he laid them out. Then the Usos came out and hit a couple super kicks, double super kick, and then attempted to hit the double splash. It didn't end all that well. And that was it for SmackDown. That's all I got to say. I do want to once again say here at the end, I will not be watching Money in the Bank live. My predictions will probably be up sometime after Raw. And then we'll see what happens. We will definitely see what happens at Money in the Bank. God, if they give it to Logan Paul, I'm going to be worried about how Twitter is going to look. So agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rithlin. I'll see you soon.